Okay, if you're like me, uh, Atari has a bunch of different graphic formats, and it's hard to see uh, what's in a particular file. And you just want to be able to do it like you do it in Windows, where you see a file, all you have to do is click on it, and boom, there it is. You can browse through them all. So whether you're an Atari 8-bit enthusiast or 16-bit enthusiast or whatever, there, fortunately, there is a program out there for us. It's called Converter or Convertor. And considering uh, there's a wide variety of Atari formats, especially in the 8-bit uh, area, uh, Convertor seems to do a great job of uh, all of them. Now, I'll put the links in the uh, description of the video. Uh, but that, you know, it's on a third-party site called Logipol, and uh, it has a couple different things in here, but one of the second one down you'll see here is Convertor, uh, and it describes what it does. Now, I don't usually demonstrate how to download something in my videos because it's pretty standard for anybody that has a browser, but just to show you how, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it from this link here and do the Save As, and when it goes there, uh, I'm going to go through uh, checking it for viruses because, I, like most people, I'm a little worried about a, a file that comes from a non-standard site or some a relatively uh, random site. Now, I downloaded it to my Windows stuff directory under my Atari uh, file structure only because I keep stuff that's uh, not actual Atari programs, so I don't get them confused. Now, I don't click on an open file. I click on the folder there so I can open the location, and I see the file there, and I right-click. Now, I use a both... Uh, malware bytes and Windows Defender to check. So here's Windows Defender. It found it. Boom, it's done. It found zero threats, so that's pretty good. And I use malware bytes as a secondary. I don't keep it loaded in memory. I just use it to check files as a second precaution. Uh, so once I right click on that and say malware bytes, it takes a little longer for it to load into memory. But here it is checking the file. Uh, it also checks for its own updates, but eventually uh, we'll come up here and give this file a clean bit of bill of health as well. So there it is, no threats found. So with that, I can go ahead and now and close this down and go to the actual file, and we'll go ahead and click on it to run it now that I have confidence uh, that it's not something going to kill my system. So let's go ahead and run the installer. And when it comes up, there's a couple options you want to uh, take and be aware of at least. Uh, when it first comes up, it'll just say a couple options. Well, what it's going to do is going to say where you want to put it, okay? And I'm going to do it in my regular program files, x86, and that's because it's not a 64-bit. It's a 32-bit application. But here's where it's going to go. It's going to automatically choose your downloads directory to store files. Well, I'm going to change that to where I keep uh, my files, where I want to have this uh, store files. So I'm going to go ahead and point it back to where I have all my Atari files, all my graphics, emulator games, all that stuff. I'm going to put it there. So here's my Atari folder here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and instead of doing like a graphics directory, I'm just going to go ahead and put it back in my Windows stuff directory. I'll decide later if I want to keep it there or move it somewhere else. The next option is file association. So instead of just clicking install now, I'm going to go to click here on the additional add-ons. And here's all these different file types and everything. Quite frankly, I didn't look through them all that much. I'm just going to ignore it and not install anything extra. All I wanted to do is the standard stuff for Atari. So I'm going to go back and uh, go back to the previous window and say install the program now. It's going to launch the installer. Now depending upon your system, it takes about a minute. And, uh, so here it is. And once you're done, hit the exit button. Now, once it does that, I'm going to look at something here. I'm on an IMG file. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to look to see if it's inserted itself in the right-click menu on File Explorer, and it has not. So there's nothing uh, crazy going on here. Uh, it just goes ahead and installs it without doing that. But we're not done yet. So another thing I do when I install a program I'm not familiar with is I go to the Task Manager and see in the Startup tab if it's installed anything here that goes out and checks every day or something like that for updates or some other kind of other utility I don't recognize. And we're good here. Okay, now that I got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, and there it is. And now we're just going to browse around and see uh, what can do for us. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to uh, different locations, but mainly uh, I'm going to go look at my Atari file locations. Now, it's navigation with different tabs is a little confusing because it keeps all these tabs open. But just be careful what you're looking for. All the PIC files, 
Here's some that uh, are from the Atari. And every Atari program seems to have a, their own format. There's PIC, there's PC1s, uh, 8 bits even worse. But here you are, you see, there's the expanded view of the one file that I was looking for. It's uh, basically clip arts. There are many Atari programs, older ones, uh, that have more graphics on there here. These are the uh, some sort of images for like discs and stuff. So you'll be able to view those as well. But be careful. Uh, I recently downloaded a ISO from uh, uh, the Internet Archive that has a lot of files on it. And there's some uh, uh, pretty naughty stuff out there. So just be careful what you're looking at. Uh, but here's another one of clip arts. Perfectly fine. So the next thing we're going to look at here is that you see there's two. And that's because I've already converted one to a regular format. So here we'll uh, look at a different one. We're going to uh, look at this guy. And there he is there. And this is an Oktoberfest uh, cartoon from years ago. So we'll go up here, and you'll notice up here there's uh, different options and everything. Uh, you can make adjustments to these pictures. You can rotate them. You have utilities that do all the kind of file manipulation or image manipulation that you might want. It even can adjust the you know, gamma and the colors and all that stuff of an image as well. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do much of that, but it's available. But the big thing we want to talk about is, besides these color things and stuff, is how to convert it. And that couldn't be simpler, okay? You just go up here to the main menu, and you go here with the image selected, and you just say Save As. You get a drop-down, and you can change where it's going to. Uh, in this case, I might want to do uh, the exact place I went to. So I'm going to click here, and I'm navigating to my Atari folder. I'm going to create a new folder uh, called Atari Graphics or whatever. Uh, so I can keep them all there so I uh, know where they're at. So they're easy to find. Then it's just a matter of choosing a file format. So I have it all set up. Uh, I click on OK, come down here, and you will not believe the options that I have. Now, there is the old BMP format, but there are all sorts of formats that you want to change it to. Uh, you can change it uh, to different things. Anyways, uh, I'm going to choose, in my particular case, I'm going to choose the... Uh, JPEG format, okay, standard format, uh, to do that. Now, one thing you'll note here that uh, although it does the newest forms of uh, web graphics today, it does not convert to another Atari format, only to all these other Windows-based uh, formats. So once you're ready, just you want to make sure you want to rename it or do whatever you want uh, to do it. If you want to keep the original or whatever, just click on uh, OK. That's OK the parameters. Once you say all that, uh, then you can click on OK again, and it closes. And now we're going to go navigate to where we stored it at and see how the conversion went. Now, the size and all that of the image produced really is based upon uh, the original bit and then what your settings you do in Converter. Uh, but let's go ahead and navigate. There's the directory I uh, created. And if I click on that, there it is. And if I double-click on it, it brings up the photo app in uh, Windows, and sure enough, not bad. It looks as pristine as the day it was created. So that was clip art. Let's take a look at the uh, more detailed graphics, uh, some of the color graphics uh, in Atari. So uh, let's go over here to uh, these and look at th these images. And you'll see Spectrum has those. And you can uh, click on any of them. Uh, let's bring in the separate window, and sure enough, now, it all depends upon how it's created, but it looks pretty good as well. So that's super great for us ST users, but what about the old 8-bit uh, files? Uh, some of those people that love their old 8-bits, which I do of mine as well. I also going to navigate back here to my 8-bit directory, and I have some images here. And I double-click on that, and there's a from a, some program I had Halloween-based uh, images. If I double-click, sure enough, they look a little grainy and stuff, and a little... Uh, a different because uh, there isn't that many pixels, but there you are. It works just fine. And just FYI, you don't have to double click on an image to save it, to convert it. Uh, you don't have to go to the image viewer. You can just say convert right from the menu. There it is. You can do multiple files at a time. Okay. Choose your uh, target folder again, and we'll navigate over there. So I'm just going to plop them in that same uh, Atari graphics, or I'll do it in the 8 bit, an images folder. And select there, do what you want, select your file type, and it'll do a whole bunch of them at one time, like I said, all to that file type. So you just say that, do the thing again down here, make your choices, say 
The person say, okay, you can close this window. And if we click on the Windows File Manager, uh, we go over here and navigate to it. And sure enough, uh, there's the old one. There's the new one. We double click. Here's the photo app. It's a little small. As a matter of fact, let's go check it. We right click and say File Info. Well, it's not bad. You know, it's a great little clip art kind of thing. Uh, it does a really nice job of converting the image. Now, while it does a really good job of converting images, you should be aware of a few quirks. Okay, first of all, this whole structure of opening up uh, different file locations, you'll see at the top, the tabs keep populating bigger and bigger and more and more tabs. Uh, and it's really confusing if you do it that way. You may want to stick with the left-hand menu to do it that way to navigate to somewhere else. Otherwise, you'll end up with a ton of tabs at the top. The other thing you might want to shy away from is anything that doesn't show up, like it shows the binary file structure and everything. Don't click on any of that stuff, even though some of them are just text files. But just leave those files alone because uh, you don't want to accidentally corrupt a APX or an ACX for your uh, driver or something like that. So just leave those alone. Stay just with the graphic files. Now, it also doesn't convert everything. As you can see here, it doesn't understand gem files, which are an Atari uh, graphic metafile format for EasyDraw. So here's some drawings I did back in the 80s. Uh, and as you can see, uh, they're different. They, they are just regular gem files, but it will not recognize any of the drawings that I did. Why? Because it's a gem file. It's a vector file that if you watch it draw, it draws in lines from here to there uh, based on the coordinates in the file. So it has nothing to do with pixel based like what uh, this program interprets. So they can't take these and uh, read these files. This is uh, sort of similar to SVG files for Windows, which have recently been supported in Windows Explorer, File Explorer. So anyways, uh, you won't be able to do some files. But here they are. Here's some other file for formats. It's perfectly fine in uh, being able to recognize those and convert them. So there you have a convertor for the Atari uh, file formats, an easy way to look at those old files you have and maybe even convert them uh, for viewing in Windows. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video. And if you want more, subscribe to the Atari Geek. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description of this video.